Yes. So I proudly, uh, no problem. <laughs> so I proudly uh, represent her. So uh, today uh, I choose to bring a very, how to say, a very actual uh, theme. It's the about the COVID-19 pandemic uh, with the emergent situations, emergent challenges that uh, it brings uh, to uh, learning and training uh, learning and training uh, settings and specifically in the light of the theme of this workshop uh, I will examine with your help the affordances of, uh, of wearable and enhanced mobile learning uh, in these uh, settings. So uh, just to mention a few things about my workshop before I uh, go uh, deeper in. Um, I have a, a few Mentimeters uh, activities that I prepare. I will, uh, I, will be, be, I will be glad if you collaborate with this uh, Mentimeter. It will make uh, it more fun. And the aim of this is to, to encourage to, uh, and develop a, a discussion uh, on the topics that we are uh, focusing uh, in. Since we are uh, here with shorter time than planned, so, I will uh, do fewer uh, of those activities uh, than I plan. So I'll skip here and there, I'll skip uh, slides. So here we go. Um, let's begin with the general thing of instructional design or learning and training. So instructional design, uh, here are uh, a few uh, definitions it concerns various it may concerns various aspects of educational processes sometimes uh, uh, people address this as instructional system design for me when I uh, uh, mentioned with instructional design uh, I understand or I include in this definition the conceptualization of the educational or training concepts the uh, design of the experience the actual developments uh, that of these concepts and as well the technologies that support the enactment of these concepts and the deployment of these uh, in realistic uh, settings. And not less important, the evaluation uh, of uh, all uh, these uh, things. And uh, in light of uh, the COVID-19 that I mentioned in the title of uh, my presentation, uh, I want to emphasize that, or include in this that uh, this uh, instruction or education can, for me, happen not necessarily uh, in, uh, inside the traditional boundaries of the classroom. It can happen anytime, anywhere, across contexts and settings. Um, let's move on. Um, so here we go with the first Mintimeter. So whoever that uh, can, uh, one can and want to use a, 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 the QR code can use the QR code. And in a few moments, I will share the Mentimeter screen. Uh, so uh, whoever wants to use the QR code, use it now to answer the question uh, and take a picture of this QR code. Are you ready? Ralph, do you need the QR code? I take a picture. All right, and then we'll move to the menti Mentimeter. I'll share the Mentimeter. So write up, up to three words or terms reflecting your personal concerns related to learning and or training in times of COVID-19. And uh, we are moving to uh, the uh, screen of the Mentimeter. Uh, here we are. Can you see the, my uh, screen of Mentimeter, Ilona? Ilona? Uh, you mean here in, in Zoom? I can see it on my, on my smartphone, but not in uh, Zoom. Here in the, in the show screen. Do you see the, the Mentimeter here with the numbers and everything or no. not? No. Okay. You, uh, let me share my screen again once more. Can yes. you see it now? No. All right. Mm -hmm. So you, uh, whoever that does not want to use the QR code can use, just enter to Menti um, and enter with these uh, uh, digits. 
accretion. All right, so if I'll review the, these terms, words uh, rapidly that uh, you are submitting, uh, talking heads, for some of us it resembles, or for the older generations among us, it, it resembles the Muppet Show, I think. Um, uh, digital poverty, uh, social learning, that's interesting, difficult to gain feedback. Yeah, I, 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 I agree to that. A personal experience, high a dropout, unfortunately. This is a risk that we are all taking during this time. Isolation, yeah, we are all experiencing this isolation. And, uh, wow, all right. So, as, as you can see uh, in, in many of these this terms, or many of these terms uh, uh, reflect uh, our stress, our concerns of, uh, of a crisis, I think that um, um, very few of us, at least at the beginning, uh, uh, could see that as a opportunity. I mean, uh, we are in this crisis for the past six or seven months, and now, uh, at least here in my country, we are starting to, to, to hear from some people about the good attributes of this crisis. I mean, uh, it allowed or permitted to some people an opportunity to contemplate, to improve themselves, to, 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 to um, con contemplate and improve their practices. Um, so uh, I, I think that we are pretty much uh, sharing uh, uh, the same uh, impressions. If I'll go back to my presentation here, so COVID-19, uh, as I say here, uh, uh, represent or present various challenges for the learning and training uh, uh, sectors. Um, and uh, one of the things is the educational and training approaches and practices. I mean, there is the old world uh, with the old habits uh, that I mentioned as a comment to the, the first talk. Um, um, uh, and I'm not convinced, personally, I'm not convinced uh, that uh, uh, this or all these old practices that we use to exercise in the traditional classrooms fit in this new world, in this new situation. Another thing uh, that uh, emerges from this, from this pandemic is the challenge related to the management and administration of the educational processes. I mean, we are not in the same space and since we are not in the same space, uh, sometimes learning and training is, how to put it, uh, might be challenging to, to administrate, to, to, to conduct. And uh, I already uh, heard such a, a comment from, from one of these workshop participants before saying that uh, he sees, I, I don't remember if, if it was you, uh, Ralph, uh, that schools would remain, traditional schools would remain for the uh, next 30 or 40 or 50 years. I, is, it, is it you that commented that before? Mm, no, I, I didn't say that. There, there, was, there was some of the participants that, that say that he suspect that the, this I mean, old... Matthias, yeah. It was me, uh, yeah. Matthias, sorry, Matthias. So this old structure might survive. Uh, yeah, it might survive. And I personally think that uh, we will surprise uh, how fast people may return to their uh, old habits. And then there is the technology. Technology, for me, and I'm a computer scientist, uh, well, I don't think that technology solves much. Technology may alleviate challenges, challenges related to the management and uh, the management and administration of educational processes. It might, man, it might alleviate challenges related to, there is a term that was not mentioned here, but I think that is relevant to, to, to what uh, one of the participants presented, the educational orchestration of activities. So technologies would be good for 
for orchestrating nicely, orchestrating the 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 the, the, the educational activities, shifting be between synchronous and asynchronous, as one of the participants mentioned. But in order to use technologies, I mean, technology for me is just a tool. It does not make the work the 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 the, the, the person uh, behind the tool is the one that is making the work and uh, you can use or, pro or properly use a tool or you can misuse a tool. So with technologies, and we will talk later on about this wearable technologies in the light of the theme of, theme of this workshop, uh, uh, we should be careful with uh, technologies. Another thing that uh, for some time, for quite of some time, uh, I was concerning, uh, considering, sorry, uh, as about the uh, wearable technologies, and I uh, expressed myself in this spirit in one of the book chapters that Ilona mentioned at the beginning of the, this talk. I think that in many senses, wearable technologies uh, are aligned to uh, the practice of mobile learning or mobile seamless learning because in so many um, uh, means, it allows you to, to practice learning or training uh, whenever, wherever and whenever it's possible across contexts and settings. So for me, uh, the wearable devices would be a wonderful mean to uh, technologically support mobile and seamless learning. Why seamless? Because uh, one of the uh, well-known challenges with mobile learning is when you jump from plane to plane or from context to context, for instance, from a interact, a individual interaction to social interaction between interaction in one place and another place, it's the learning becomes bumpy. The learning pro process becomes bumpy and you aspire to like make, make it more fluent, more seamless. Um, so, uh, here goes another Mintimeter survey that would be interesting. So I invite whoever wants, that wants to use the uh, QR code, please uh, take a picture of the QR code and I uh, welcome you to participate. And in like uh, 20 seconds, I will sh shift to the uh, uh, Mentimeter screen uh, for which you, in which you will be able to uh, uh, enter through uh, a code, a personal code. So we will sample through you. Are you are you done, Ralph? Is yes. Okay? All right. I'm I'm taking you as my my sample case. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, Sorry, sorry. Okay, can you see my Mentimeter screen? Oh yeah, you could see my Mentimeter screen. So, that's surprising, guys. I mean, okay, it's still moving. <laughs> It's still moving. Let's give it uh, a few more seconds. We have uh, five responders. You are most welcome. I encourage you to respond on, on this Mentimeter. Three, seven, nine, six, seven, eight, five. Oh yeah. Let's give it some more seconds, uh, some, some additional seconds. All right, so still, I, I don't know. Do you want to introduce yourself to, to the members of this workshop? Yes? Okay, okay. Uh, I mean, the guys are, are 
guys are uh, doing a millimeter, and here uh, Gila Kurtz would say hello. Hi, hello. I don't see myself. No, you don't see yourself, but here you are. <laughs> Hi, good to see you, everyone. Hi, Lola. Hello. Hi, good to see Hi, you. Hi, good to see you. Sorry. Hello. We just finished another conference. Okay. So Is enjoy. It Thank you. Bye bye. -bye. bye. Are you trusting me with them alone? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, going back, going back to the Mintimeter, I mean, it's kind of surprising for me. And I don't know if the reason that uh, most of you heard the introduction of new technologies um, is the most prominent uh, aspect. Uh, uh, I don't know if it, this is due to your personal profiles as computer scientists, or most of us uh, are computer scientists, or you, or this is, comes from from a, a, from another place. But uh, let's discuss about uh, this later. Uh, a, what what surprises me a bit, I, I must admit, that the emphasis on the management of educational processes uh, was given the uh, the less level of uh, prominence. Uh, uh, I mean, if there is one very major incentive to introduce technologies, I mean traditionally, uh, in, in terms of technology enhanced learning, even before wearable technologies, is to alleviate those, those, those problems that occasionally happen in classrooms, in universities. Um, so for me, it's, it's kind of surprising. All right. Uh, we'll discuss about this uh, later on. I'm going back to my presentation. And uh, in the spirit, if you uh, gave uh, this rank to the technologies, so let's move to wearable technologies. So uh, uh, for me, wearable technologies, and I address this in, in uh, my book chapter with uh, Professor Gila Kurtz, um, so uh, they might address uh, address uh, as a Internet of Things devices. Uh, 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 so uh, uh, they are sometimes represented or associated with smart and microcontrollers devices worn uh, close to or to the surface of the human body. Uh, additionally, a, a, a Internet of Things devices could be embedded to the educational or the training environment. Um, we mentioned this in uh, uh, one of the passages in, in the, of the book chapters. It's very important not just to sense the trainee or the teacher or the student. Uh, it would be very important to sense the conditions in the learning or training environment. And, and, and uh, for that purpose, the IoT would do a wonderful and an uh, and encompassing uh, role. Uh, and it's uh, uh, um, capable to detect, analyze, transmit the data concerning various conditions, addressing uh, the user and its environment, uh, as I, I mentioned. So having in mind this uh, learning training topic, the, uh, in the light of the COVID-19, uh, I would like to hear from you right now about uh, at least uh, uh, up to three wearable technologies you would consider using during uh, such educational or training session uh, in the light of the uh, COVID-19. So we have here the uh, QR code of the Mintimeter. In a few seconds, I'm shifting to the uh, Mintimeter um, uh, uh, screen. So, uh, you are most welcome to take a picture of the QR code. And uh, if everybody are okay. Okay. So uh, I'm shifting to my present to the uh, Mentimeter. Um, well, so.
Don't forget that um, I would love to uh, hear about uh, things in light of learning and training settings. So we are taking, uh, talking about education in times of COVID-19 and the affordances of wearable devices in these conditions. Uh, I can share something. I think um, generally any health related devices, I can particularly imagine well at the moment, people have an increased interest in monitoring themselves as well. So why not give it a positive spin and make sure that Mensana and Corporesano, there is workout routine followed that keeps us fit and engaged while we're all stuck at home. That's, that's sort of rational. So I think anything that is fitness armband or fitness function of your phone, is, why not? Or if you have at home uh, more sophisticated equipment, um, as many do, especially people with pre-existing conditions, um, I'm sure your hypertension candidates, they don't have stuff at home, like the, the pump up uh, blood pressure measurement device. Why not use that and use that also for other purposes that are more fun? With smart glasses, I think we all share that it's exciting because it allows us to bring things to our living room that otherwise we don't have access to. Um, I added uh, EDA, so electrodermal activity, because it's closely related to, to stress level. And um, I'm missing the feedback for example, from seeing my students because we can't enforce uh, them to turn the camera on. And if we do some studies, uh, it would be interesting to see if stress levels behave differently than in, in presence, for example. We actually wrote this in, in our project proposal with the VR learning in hazardous environments like high voltage. And I uh, think it would be applicable here too. Anybody else wants to comment? We'll, we'll exploit the, the spirit of, of, of the discussion of that comments. I mean, it's nice. All right. So we'll move to, uh, uh, because I think that uh, we are getting, we are uh, in short of time. Am I right, Ilona? Uh, yeah, we have about quarter of an hour and maybe if we have like five minutes at the end to discuss yeah. the next so, steps. So yeah. we, I'll, I'll speed up a bit. Yeah, I'll speed up a bit uh, with your permission. Um, so you mentioned all these devices. We mentioned these devices as the technological aspects. We mentioned that these devices in, a, in uh, the crisis such as uh, COVID-19 and for me this crisis uh, uh, summits emergent conditions so this is conditions that are flexible sometimes or occasionally uh, they are not uh, expected they surprise you I mean we I think that we are we all learn how how I would put it uh, in a delicate way. Our governments are surprised from uh, the evolution uh, of, of this uh, pandemic. I mean, how rapid things uh, could happen. And, and, uh, and uh, con well, considering learning and training, its administration and technologies in, uh, in the sense of wearable technologies, I think that it's a, re, a, a, a very, how to put it, a, a colossal even, a, a challenge to, to, uh, to design an instructional activities in, in this kind of emergent conditions. One of the things, and this is another thing that I also mentioned in uh, our book chapters, uh, those are mobile seamless learning dimensions that reflect so, uh, uh, each of them reflect uh, learning training, the uh, administration of uh, the process and the technology. And this is not something that I invented. Uh, this was uh, conceptualized by a researcher called Wong during 2012. And uh, 
what I find convenient about these uh, mobile seamless dimensions is that they um, like enable uh, you as the designer to facilitate or, or uh, the, the, the design process. I mean, uh, it kind of decompose the, the complexity of uh, this design process, which is uh, design, instructional design is complex by definition without this COVID-19 crisis. I mean, imagine how, uh, uh, how challenging uh, it is in, in, with this new uh, pandemic. So I think that these MSLs uh, uh, could be used to facilitate the design process. And what I uh, want to uh, present to you now, uh, while uh, having in mind these MSLs, a uh, uh, design approach that I kind of uh, adopted from uh, another researcher called uh, Ravencraft. Uh, he published this uh, as far as I know during uh, 2012 also. And before uh, uh, presenting my approach, let's go rapidly uh, and, and uh, mention this MSL. So the first MSL concerns the encompassment of formal and informal learning. You can see that it's about the educational approach. And, uh, and informal learning becomes prominent in days of close downs of, of schools. It's not just about the formal curricula, it's about uh, uh, students sometimes uh, uh, learning things informally at their homes or uh, 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 beyond the boundaries of, of the school. The second MSL concerns the, uh, the uh, type of interactions, of the educational interactions that could be obviously uh, individually or, or conducted socially, which by itself, it's a huge world, but I mean, there is a, a huge campus of uh, collaborative learning of, or CSCL, which is, which is a world by itself. Uh, and then the uh, third MSL concerns the learning across time, yeah? Uh, learning and then learning across locations, which was mentioned in a talk before in this uh, session. Uh, then the fifth MSL concerns the uh, ubiquitous access to learning resources. I mean, we are not accessing the learning resources from, from uh, one location or in one way. I mean, this is something that can happen uh, uh, in, in, in many ways. Then the encompassing of physical and digital worlds, that this is something that becomes also very prominent in days of COVID-19, combined use of multiple types of devices. Um, then the eighth uh, MSL would uh, address the seamlessness or the seamless switching between multiple learning tasks. And this is something else that was mentioned here in this talk the knowledge synthesis and eventually the encompassment of multiple pedagogical models. So on and on, if I try to consolidate all this mess, sorry, uh, into three meta categories, we have categories that concern the educational approach or training approach, the administration of this uh, uh, educational process and the technology used to support or alleviate uh, these uh, educational or training uh, challenges. Um, so having in mind uh, this, I have uh, this model, uh, and this is, uh, this is the model that, uh, the approach, sorry, that was adapted from uh, Ravenscraft uh, that I mentioned before. This is, uh, I, I found it a, a bit complex for a slide, so I uh, made for this occasion uh, simplified, uh, a simplified version of, of this. And um, uh, 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 a session before me, uh, 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 the uh, presenter mentioned TPAC, so uh, in some ways it addressed some things of, of TPAC. So let's uh, go over uh, this. So uh, we commence uh, somewhere here. 
and we consider the emerging conditions also in COVID-19. I imagine that COVID-19, uh, unfortunately, won't be the last crisis uh, on this planet. So let's put it as a, a situation of emerging conditions. And yes, yeah, sure. If you yeah. if you watch if you just watch the clock just to remind maybe like if we could wrap up in three minutes do you think yes we will, wrap, yeah. we will wrap up in three minutes thank you. yeah yeah thank you yes. Cons uh, consolidated uh, cons uh, consider sorry with the educational uh, requirements this goes to the MSL dimensions that you saw in the uh, previous slide those are prioritized studied or explored or learned. And according to this, we are uh, proposing a, a design, evaluating a design, and spirally doing the iterations, yeah, till we aspire or go to a mature concept for wearable, enhanced MSL, optimized for emerging conditions. Now, what's interesting in, in this approach is that in emerging conditions, sometimes, the emergent conditions might uh, uh, change in the middle of the design process. So um, I left the room to reinitiate or reconsider the whole process, something that uh, it's a bit messy in a design process. So we are not going uh, uh, like uh, uh, in a, let's go here. We are not going in the onion uh, uh, necessarily to the uh, insight, to the mature concept, we can have opportunity here to jump outside and reconsider the uh, whole process, unfortunately, uh, due to the uh, emergent conditions that can uh, occur in the design process. So uh, due to shortage of time, uh, uh, I hope that you enjoyed uh, this session. Ilona, uh, I uh, return the floor to you. Thank you, Dan. Thank you so much. Interesting model. And I think the results from the uh, Mentimeter are, are really interesting. I took screenshots. It will be interesting to share on, on social media. All right. Okay. Thank you so much.